Welcome to the month of February and here we are again celebrating one another in fellowship and in alignment with the kingdom of God. It is our joy that this month we once again have all night prayer meeting. This coming Friday night we will be joining in two hour increments. So I welcome you to join with us and let's leave the fragrance of our prayers throughout the sanctuary and permeating Broward County. The theme of our year is Thy Kingdom Come, but it is placed specifically and particularly in the prayer that the Lord taught us to pray. For this month's home team, though, I want us to take a look at Matthew in the sixth chapter and preceding, I believe, the fifth verse where it says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. This is the critical explanation that the Lord gives to us, that they may be seen of men. We'll talk about that just in a moment. Verily I say unto you that they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, he's talking to his disciples, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, but as the, or as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. But be not ye therefore like unto them, for you know, or for your father knoweth. Here's a key interesting moment for us to learn. Your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our father which art in heaven. A, a few key components that I want to uh, accentuate from this month's discussion in our home teams and that I, I find to be a very intriguing and informative on how we're going to seek the Lord. There is a power in corporate praying. This is somewhat what we do when we meet on Friday night. We all come together and pray. Uh, but then there is a power in praying secretly. There is that power of getting alone with God. The songwriter said it like this, shut in with God in a secret place. Uh, but the danger of that is sometimes our prayer is so secret that even God can't find it. <laughs> the truth is that it is powerful to be accountable to one another and yet still have that privacy of secrecy when we pray. And so here's what the Lord instructed us to do. Don't pray to be seen of men. There is a disposition that you can tell when someone is doing it in a manner to be seen of men. And then there are the times that someone is praying and you can tell they just don't care. They are locked up in the presence of God and they are talking to the Lord. The first thing is that the Lord suggested that we do secret praying. Uh, the secret of praying is praying in secret and doing it in a manner that it is not to be seen of men, but it is to be heard by God. Secondly, that is a critical component to this is praying sincerely, uh, not using vain repetitions. Now, when you're praying, if you do not use a prayer book, which I do not recommend because prayer books are saying a prayer, they are not praying a prayer. And the Lord did not tell us to say a prayer. If it was just say uh, to say a prayer, then we could just read anything that someone wrote and say it after them. But he said, when you pray, pray like this. We are to pray a prayer. And when you pray a prayer, you do it not to be seen of men, number one. And then number two, you do not do it in a manner that it is just after vain repetitions. Now, when you look at religions in Tibet, in that uh, sort of prayer, they have a prayer wheel. And they believe that as often as they turn that wheel, it is every time the wheel turns, it is a prayer 
that is being said. And so all one has to do to pray a prayer is to turn this wheel. And sometimes they turn the wheel thousands of times. Then others have proposed that if you would like to pray, then just light a candle. Pray your prayer, light the candle, and as long as the candle burns, then your prayer goes up. I do not propose that these are prayer practices that the Lord imagined for his church to have. He said, when you pray, pray in this manner. He was not saying for us to repeat exactly the same words that are in that verse. Now, if we were to pray them together, we all would know them generally. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We can say that together, but that's not what the Lord was proposing. He was proposing that we pray in this manner. So it is more of a guideline than it is a certainty of how one should pray. Pray ye after this manner. Now, it's interesting to me that God starts this prayer, Jesus giving us the instructions after the manner that he does. Aristotle proposed that God was the unmovable or the unmoved mover. Uh, Huxley coined the idea agnosticism, and that is to mean you don't care one way or another whether there's a God, you're agnostic to it. And Huxley was known as Darwin's bulldog because he so fought for the idea of evolution. But uh, he proposed that God is eternal energy. Uh, Matthew Arnold put the idea that God is the absolute unknown. Uh, Star Wars proposes that it is the force. May the force be with you. Some refer to God as the man upstairs, but Jesus said, when you pray, you are to pray our Father, which art in heaven. This is not everybody's prayer. Some people say, well, everybody ought to pray this prayer. No, it is not a prayer for everyone. This is a prayer for those who have God as their Father. See, I'm not born by God by creation. I am born by conception. I have been born a second time. I have been born again. Unless the Lord has become my father by spirit birth and water birth, then I cannot say our father, my father, uh, who are, are in heaven. Because John 1 and 11 says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many, catch it, as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. So in other words, you are not the son and daughter of God until you receive the power to become the son or the daughter of God. Jesus was calling out to some people in his generation that were all around him and they were pursuing their own desires. And he said to them in John 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil. Mm. And the lust of your father will you do. So in other words, the lust of your father is what you will pursue. This is why we do set aside time to pray. We do put it into our schedule. We do craft the way to the house of God. We are purposeful and proactive in following after the mannerisms of the King of Glory. Our worship demonstrates who our Father is. Our prayer and our praise tells the lusts of our heart. I desire to praise Him. I want to worship Him. I choose to seek His face. I choose to be with you all on this evening tonight. It is because we are God's children and the lusts of our Father we will do. And so I have been born again. Have you? Have you been born again? Have you been born of the water and of the Spirit? If you haven't been born, of the, born again, you know it is a continual press at the Cathedral of Pentecost to get you baptized 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. That is water birth. And we do not rest in our press to lead people into being born of the Spirit. And the Bible demonstrates every time one is born of the Spirit, they spoke with a heavenly language in the Bible. I don't know where people got the idea that you could just repeat words and be saved. I have a clue. I know they call some of it the Roman road if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. But they miss the fact that the book of Romans was written to those who were already the sons of God. If you did not realize that, just go open the first chapter of the book of Romans. That wasn't written to people who were not born again. And so we can't go to a letter written to people who were already filled with the Holy Ghost and already baptized in Jesus' name to discover how to be saved. And so this is why we've got to start in proper context. And so there are truths that are self-evident in the pursuit of the ways of God. We know this prayer leads us to the anticipation of a coming kingdom, the expectation of a perfect justice, a contemplation of plenty. There's daily bread. He also teaches us in the prayer that there is a responsibility to self-judge and that you would situate your judgment in mercy. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. There's always to be a leadership that will be expected in the kingdom of God. Lead us not in temptation. There will always be, hallelujah, a deliverer in the kingdom of God. Deliver us from evil. There will never be a church that's absent a leader and absent a deliverer because the church is not built by men it is built by God. I'm talking about the church in the book of Revelation. That's what the songwriter wrote about. But there is a day coming in the last of time where the Lord's going to call time to an end. And the people who do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Ladies and gentlemen, let's continue to press toward learning the manner to pray. There is nothing like seeking his face and doing it in the aspect of that he so instructs. I love you all. Thank you for pouring out yourself in the discussion tonight so that when it's all said and done, there will be a powerful prayer that is prayed to the glory of his name. The Lord bless you.